Why is the Human Genome Project an important milestone in biology? Firstly, a quick overview of the Human Genome Project. The Human Genome Project was an international research task aimed at mapping out the entire human genome. Mapping all the genes in the human body aimed to discover all 3 billion base sequences. This was mainly achieved through genetic linkage maps and mainly the Sanger method of DNA sequencing. The Human Genome Project started in 1990 as an international project led by Francis Collins. It worked with no competition until 1998 when a private company called Solera started mapping the human genome. In 2001, the first draft for the human genome was presented by both organisations. And in 2003, the Human Genome Project was completed. The main technologies used in the Human Genome Project include the Sanger method of DNA sequencing, electrophoresis used to read this information, and recombinant DNA technology used for gene replication. One of the most important techniques used in the mapping the human genome was the Sanger method of DNA sequencing. It involved heating a DNA molecule to separate it into a complementary and template strand, and then adding it into four beakers along with DDNTPs, nucleotides, and DNA polymerase. The Sanger method of DNA sequencing resulted in different length DNA strands which could be used to map the human genome, but it is important to note that it is not the only method used in DNA sequencing, and other methods such as the shotgun methods which are derived from companies such as Solera were also used to map the human genome. Electrophoresis involves preparing the four solutions to a gel and then running an electrical current through them. Because of DNA's negative nature, they are instantly attracted to the positive end of the gel. And because of the different size DNA, some of them will travel slower than others. This results in bands which can be used to read out the base sequence. Recombinant DNA technology refers to any technology where genes are cut out of one organism and put into another. This is done through the use of restriction enzymes which are used to cut the gene. They are then placed into the plasmas of bacteria which are allowed to replicate, amplifying the amount of DNA which contains this gene. Even though recombinant DNA can be used for DNA amplification, it's not as effective as PCR or polymerase chain reactions. This involves constantly denaturing a piece of DNA and then allowing polymerase to create new DNA strands from these denatured ones. Some of the benefits derived from the Human Genome Project include easier and more accurate medical diagnosis, gene therapy, and greater understanding of evolutionary ancestors and predecessors. The Human Genome Project has benefited us greatly in the area of medical diagnosis. Let's take Huntington's disease as an example. Huntington's disease is characterized by symptoms such as fatigue, forgetfulness, insomnia, and being bipolar. But imagine the whole range of other diseases which also are characterized by these symptoms. Well, using the Human Genome Project, we are able to compare healthy base sequences to mutated ones, which is especially useful for diseases which are hard to identify based on just symptoms. So, using this information, we are able to identify Huntington's disease as a base sequence mutation in chromosome 4. It is an amplification of the CAG codon and occurs 10 to 26 times in a normal person, but up to 80 times in a person suffering from Huntington's disease. The Human Genome Project allowed for the invention of new technologies for medical treatment such as gene therapy. This included replacing mutated genes with healthy genes, and a specific example of this is in cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis occurs as a mutation in the CTF gene and as a deletion of a single codon from chromosome 7. So gene therapy aims to replace all the mutated genes with healthy genes in cystic fibrosis. This is done by taking the healthy gene and inserting it into a modified virus. This virus is then inhaled by the patient and this patient starts to get healthy genes replacing their mutated ones in their life. An important limitation of the Human Genome Project is the fact that base sequences are just information or pieces of data. This information needs to be interpreted and to a normal person it's just a bunch of letters on a page. This information is only useful if a scientist is able to interpret it and see what it does. Another important limitation of the Human Genome Project is the fact that it does not account for any environmental factors such as sunlight, nutrition, healthcare, and shelter.
These factors can influence variation with humans and is not accounted for in the data collected from the Human Genome Project. Genetic linkage maps show the relative distance between linked genes. This can be as a percentage or in map units, but linkage maps do not show the actual physical location of a gene on a chromosome, and further mapping, such as physical mapping and uh, DNA-based sequencing, is needed for further information. As crossing over occurs in meiosis, alleles can swap from one chromosome to another. This creates different genotypes to the expected ones, and these are called recombinant genotypes. The percentage of offspring who possess one of these recombinant genotypes can be used to determine the distance between linked genes. To find the relative distance between two linked genes, we take the recombinant offspring and divide it by the total offspring. This gives us the percentage of recombinants, which can then be converted to map units. For example, 12% recombinants equals 12 map units between linked genes. Linkage maps could not be used to map the entire human genome, as they do not give the exact position of a gene on a chromosome, only a gene's relative position to another gene. As this is one of the aims of the Human Genome Project, the amount of information gained from a linkage map is not enough detail to be able to map the human genome. Linkage maps also do not identify the base sequences which are another part of the human genome. They also do not identify non-coding DNA, parts of our genome which do not appear to have genes on them. The Human Genome Project also mapped out these non-coding areas, but could not use genetic linkage maps as they do not provide enough detail. The reason why the Human Genome Project is such an important achievement for science is we are able to discover what a human is made of. This information is key for medical development and generally increases our understanding of what it means to be a human.